Hello, this is Brett Settles with Revisto. Today we're going to be doing episode 4, or entry 4, whatever we're calling it, in the Clash Automation video series to really kind of go over that process from beginning to end. Now, just a quick recap before we jump into our topics today. We started with the building blocks of Clash Automation, which are our search sets, appearance profiles, and really just a discussion around how those were going to be so important to Clash Automation itself. We then, in the second entry, went through and worked on the Clash test, or actually generated the Clashes via the parameters and the test creation that we can see up here and the parameters we can see over here on the right. In the third entry, we worked with the results and really went through a, a various ways that we can view and manipulate the results based on existing appearance profiles and all of that. So really what we're going to focus on in this entry is the communication and how are humans going to communicate through this coordination process. Um, now, this will be done in very different ways, uh, depending on what type of client you are and what type of project you're working in. But hopefully some of the features today will pop out as how they will be useful and why we included them in this, uh, in, uh, this version of Revista. So first of all, what we want to do is, is we are actually going to go into one of the tests here. So we're going to go into mechanical versus hydronic and we're going to double click and open this up now what we're going to see is is that we're going to see that all of these issues have been automated the reason i can tell is because under status instead of reviewed not reviewed or approved there's an actual issue once these clashes get related to an issue, they essentially become one and the same. The reviewed, not reviewed, and approved are ways that we can not only see what still needs to be reviewed, but what is legitimately an issue and what is a false positive that we can get rid of. So in this example, you can see that every single one of these items is an issue. And I can actually click here and see where that issue is. So this is what the recipient of that issue is actually seeing on the other end. So here you'll notice that this is Revisto, the way that all of our end users have always used it. But now the process has been facilitated in a way that allows you to take care of everything that they need in one platform instead of jumping around from platform to platform. Over here, you can see the filters that we normally see in Revisto. We can see the issue located right here as I have it selected. We can see the chat dialogue. Notice that if I change anything about this, such as status or any of that, that those get time stamped uh, as Revista always has in the issue tracker. You'll notice down at the bottom that there is now a link back to the clash itself, giving that clash number as well as revealing the grid, the level, the room, and if they are in the model, any spaces or areas or any user-defined Revisto zones. If I click right here, I can jump right back to this clash directly in the model and see that now the status has actually changed in progress and the priority has changed. So as the recipients of these issues work on these issues, we're gonna actually see that come through to us on the other side as coordinators. Now let's jump back out of this test and into another test and talk a little bit about the reviewed, approved, and not reviewed status. So if I wanna jump out, I can simply go up to the top left, select back, and then I can get into any other test. So let's do sanitary versus structure. I can double click on the test name or select open. If I select open, you'll notice that all of this is not reviewed. So that means that many of these need to be reviewed in some way, shape or form by the team responsible for coordination or the individuals. 
So if I want to go in here and start reviewing these, the first thing we don't want to do is get in the way of our teammates that are trying to make progress on the same project. So we have a system for that where we allow you to check out the test and only you can edit that test, that individual test, while you work on these issues. So as we go through these issues, maybe we want to see this. We can see that, all right, let's take a look at it. Definitely looks like we have a legitimate issue there with the placement of that pipe um, with that sleeve in that beam right there. So let's go ahead and make sure that this is absolutely reviewed and needs to become an issue. So then we can move on. This allows us to take a look at this. We can see, do we have a problem? Absolutely. We need to figure out what's going on here. Let's go ahead and mark this as reviewed, indicating that it needs to be turned into an issue. As we go through here, we can begin to look at this and maybe we say, you know what? That's actually a perfect fit. And I don't know why the clash is going off. We've got the sleeve here. Looks like it has to do with the threads or maybe something that's just not an issue. We can say, you know what? We're going to approve this clash. That means that that clash will no longer be <coughs> considered an active issue. Now we do have some options to create issues from that, but in this case, that's how we're going to do this. So as we go through here, notice that we can now select multiple clashes. If we want to review many different clashes going on on a single level, we can do that here. Uh, we can select all the clashes if need be and see exactly where all the clashes are located or select none of those clashes. Now to continue on, we're gonna go through some of this pretty quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these, and I'm gonna go ahead and say these are reviewed and definitely issues. I'm gonna select these right here, and we're gonna say, you know what? These are approved, these are not issues. Go through another section here, and then we'll say, you know what? These are reviewed. These are definitely going to be issues. Now, as we look through these clashes, you'll notice that I've got a mix of items that have been reviewed, but no issues been created. I've got items that have been approved, which means that they're either a false positive, something that will be field fit or anything along that, uh, those lines. And then uh, we also have not reviewed. Of course, not reviewed means that we just simply haven't looked at it as far as uh, an individual on the coordination team. <clears throat> so, as you get coordinators together, this is how they're going to run through that process of determining if a clash should be an issue. Clashes and issues are very tightly related, but they're not necessarily the same thing. And that's what we want to make sure that we get through in the workflow is that we want to make sure that if we send a clash to a designer, someone in the field, or someone in the fabrication shop, that they get all the information that they need without actually having to use any of these tools as the coordinators can feed that information to those users. Now, let's say that we have been done uh, or we are done coordinating for this session and we wanna generate some issues out of what we reviewed today. That's as simple as coming up here. And this is the second part of the automation. Now you'll notice that we performed some automation with the criteria, came up with all these groups immediately, and then we reviewed them. This is where we can go through and say what exactly needs to be an issue. I'll go ahead and click here, and this will tell me I can create new issues for everything that's been reviewed, which is default, which is the way that we feel it should be, which is that if a coordinator's reviewed it and says that it is an issue, in that group, it will become a clash, or we can make issues from every single uh, item in here if we wish to do so. That is something that the user will have to choose. By default, we only turn issues that have been reviewed or clashes that have been reviewed into issues. When I sync this, we will see that these issues are gonna be created. It will run through that process real quick. 
and everything that was reviewed will now have an actual issue created. Now keep in mind that these are issues that were created with the uh, issue automation parameters that were set up in the test. We'll go back and visit those here in a second. But what I'd like to point out here is that now these are in the issue tracker, highly visible with all of the information that has always been here inside of Revisto, along with being able to see exactly where that clash is located at in the map tool as well. So lots of extended functionality, the ability to see this, quickly toggle off the sections. We got high visibility with our default viewing uh, with that white background, the green and the red. So if I go back to 3D, it will bring me right back into uh, the Clash tool. Now, some people will have access to this. Uh, some people will be locked out via permissions. It's all based on those roles, right? How are we getting the information from the models through the coordinators and out to the people that need to fix the problems as efficiently as possible? The one thing to keep in mind is that if we go to the issue tracker, you'll notice that now all of these issues are located here like they always um, were in the prior workflow, which means that everything with automated reporting, filtering, all of that still remains. In fact, there's just more metadata to work with there, such as the class number, grid, level, and room. So that is something that we want to take advantage of, is being able to report on the clashes that are turned into issues. In the future, we look to actually report on the clashes and the, the numbers of the clashes themselves. Well, thank you very much for joining me in this, and there will be another entry coming soon regarding the live meeting and how to use Revisto effectively in that live meeting.